Title two. All right. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for this uh, third episode of the ICA Cricket Show. Probably brought to you by the Indian Cricketers Association. It's uh, my absolute privilege to present uh, to you three stalwarts of Indian women's cricket. Uh, a couple of them pioneers, one who played more recently. Uh, let's start off with uh, Shanta Rangaswamy. Shanta, welcome uh, on board. Uh, former Indian cricketer, currently serving in the BCCI Apex Council. And somebody who's, you know, the torchbearer of women's cricket over the years, uh, kept it going when, you know, when nothing was a like passion, passion is what kept uh, them going. The same Shubhangi, Kulkani, welcome aboard again, both Arjuna awardees. Shubhangi, it's an absolute pleasure to, to see you. I, I don't know when we met last, but uh, it's great to have you on board. Again, uh, Shubhangi with Shanta, a former Indian captain just kept this the thing going, you know, women's cricket against all odds and made sure that, you know, the girls reach where they are today. Uh, the, the future looks very bright, thanks to these two people. Thank you, Shubhangi, again for joining us. Uh, we, we come to uh, Snail. Snail, wonderful to have you. Uh, uh, you know, quick bowler. Uh, I, I believe, I, unfortunately, I don't remember seeing you bowl, but I read that you're pretty quick, so pretty sharp. So good to know that. And, you know, that's, that's what's happening with the men's team also. We're picking up some decent pace over the years. Uh, she's, of course, a freelance journalist, which is something that we share a common background in. Uh, I hope it's not too free, Shabangi, that you get paid well in this particular uh, profession of yours. Uh, welcome on board. Thank you. Yeah. Great. So the, the basic focus of uh, today's show will be, obviously, the Women's Tour of England. We had a dramatic start to the only test, you know, the, our girls earned a fantastic draw. And we had some new stars uh, coming in. Obviously, uh, you don't play, uh, women don't play too much test cricket, which we will discuss the whys of it. But it was a great start. Uh, Shanta, would you agree that that test match really set the tone? I think so. Um, um, one, one will have to dwell into the recent past. If we have to... Uh, examine how our girls did. We have not had the red ball cricket, even domestic cricket in the last three years. And the last they played test was some seven, eight years back. So um, they have landed here uh, without any uh, practice of the red ball. I mean, match practice, but kudos, credit to them that they did so well. Incidentally, I just read that it's a world record where um, five debutants, for, uh, or there were five half centuries from debutants, which included the Dunkley of UK and um, England and uh, two of Shefali, otherwise Deepthi, Snerana, um, and uh, uh, Smithy. Uh, Smithy, then there are five of them who made the uh, five half centuries were made by debutants, out of which two came. And the other thing is, when all looked lost, when the main batsmen failed, the others had the conviction to stand up and uh, perform well. I feel uh, it was, a, they each got a very honorable draw, fighting with their backs to the wall. And I think this augurs very well because uh, Deepthi Sharma, captaincy material, just 21, 22, 20, maybe. The Safali is 17, and there are some youngsters like Jamima and others in the background who are all pretty young. So uh, I would say the future looks good. But still, I want to bring you on this. How, how do you think the girls, I mean, you yourself would not have played too much red ball cricket, right? So how, how did the girls adapt? I mean, how did they do this? You know, bowling 20 overs, 30 overs, long spells. How do, so, how do you think they manage? How is the uh, transformation? They had only red ball cricket. Let me tell you. Oh, when I say red ball, I mean limited overs. <laughs> Actually, I'm one of the generations who was quite lucky in that respect and uh, got to play a decent amount of uh, multi-day cricket and first-class cricket. Otherwise, most players of the current generation only play list A and T20 cricket. When uh, BCCI took over women's cricket, uh, for the first couple of years, there was a two-day tournament, which was counted as first-class. Um, then in my uh, final years of uh, playing, I think 2015, 
uh, I played an interzonal uh, three-day tournament. So at the start of my BCCI career and at the end of my BCCI domestic career, I played a little bit of uh, domestic tournaments, which were more than 50 overs or 20 overs. And those were a completely different challenge skill-wise, fitness-wise, uh, temperament-wise than anything that limited overs cricket can throw at you. So there is absolute value in having that uh, longer format uh, back at the domestic level and uh, considering that India are now playing tests regularly which is a trend that I hope really continues into next year not uh, like last time it's been seven years gap since uh, the last test match so if India are going to play test matches regularly I would love to see um, some domestic first class matches maybe at the interzonal level uh, come back to domestic cricket there hasn't been domestic first class cricket for women since 2018 season so uh, it's it's a, the skill wise it's a completely different challenge as um, Shubangi uh, and uh, Shanta have a much more deep and uh, uh, experience of uh, playing the longer format and I think it's really going to benefit all other formats if the Indian domestic players play first class cricket much more regularly. Yeah, I absolutely agree with what uh, Snell is saying. Uh, we should be playing a lot more uh, multi day matches even in the uh, domestic tournaments. But uh, to put things in perspective, um, all, most other countries don't have multi-day uh, formats in their domestic cricket. And I think now that we are starting to play test matches, and I'm quite sure everybody would want to play test uh, cricket from now on. I think this format should be included um, in, in all the country uh, domestic matches. Actually, the ICC themselves have been focusing more on the T20 and the ODI format because they think that's the way the game uh, will be promoted if, as far as women's cricket is concerned. So I think they all need to have a relook at uh, what formats uh, we, we should be playing now. Earlier, so, we, when uh, uh, I was the chairman of the selection committee and the BCCI, yeah. um, thanks to the efforts of then President Mr. Anurag Thakur and you know, uh, general manager operation Sridhar, late Sridhar, MV Sridhar, uh, we, we played test matches whenever, team came to, whenever teams came to India, but it stopped because New Zealand refused to play. And then uh, 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 what ha it so happened that uh, uh, when there are no multi-day international cricket, BCC also stopped the domestic cricket in the past two, three years. But um, thanks to the efforts of the BCC secretary and other office bearers, they have taken up the issue with uh, ECB and Cricket Australia. And now I think a sort of an agreement, our understanding is there that whenever uh, India goes there or they come to India, there'll be at least one test, which I feel... Okay. Is something to look forward to for all the current day cricketers. Yeah, I, mean, I, I guess one of the arguments that they put forth as far as administrators go is test cricket, even in men's test cricket, revenue is you know at a loss. But then the whole idea of cricket, the other forms of cricket supporting test cricket has been bought into now by many people. So that should apply here too. So I, I would, as you said, with BCCI, Shanta, when you mentioned that they are now ensuring this, so I guess there is a lot of hope in that sense. So, uh, you know, from moving on from, from the test, and, and I just hope that uh, the efforts that have been gone into this, all this organizing these things will bear fruit. But we have a huge, uh, the, the next one, one and a half years, or maybe two years, there's a huge amount of limited overs cricket that's coming our way. The World Cup in New Zealand, the T20, and the first time Commonwealth Games, the women's team has got an entry. Uh, so, so looking at that, Shanta, this, this is a start. Uh, today, the, the game ODI at Bristol is the start of this phase. You have seen the test match. You have seen some of these youngsters. What, what would you your starting level be in terms of, do you have any particular things that you would like to see implemented? Even from the days when I was the chairman of the selection committee, I have noticed uh, the, the fall guy concept is most applicable to Poonam route. Despite performing well, every time her place is always, you know, not sure. She's unsure of her place. I mean, from what I hear, the grapevines and things, not that I, I know the current thinking. But I would expect not too many changes from the team that played the test, except perhaps for definitely bring the need for bringing in a, 
uh, uh, away going spinner, either uh, left arm spinner uh, in uh, um, Radha Yadav or, uh, um, or, or uh, the leggy Punam Yadav. But given the fact that uh, the senior left arm spinner uh, was 96 wickets in ODI, ODIs, Ekta Bisht, I would, I think uh, she, if she gets uh, four, she'll complete a century and join the elite group of uh, Julian Goswami, Neetu David and Nushin Al Qadir. So my, I would drop one pacer, Puja or Shika and take uh, um, a left arm spinner, mostly Ekta Bisht, because Poonam Yadav past one year has not been in form and has not been in performing, but for that, See, there's, an, uh, there's a question why two off spinners, but then both Deep Tishama and Snehrana have done well, both with the bat and the ball. So I don't see how we can drop them. I mean, given a choice, I would make just one change to the team that played the test. All right. Uh, Snehal, uh, can you weigh in on this? Two things I want to ask you about if you have your uh, convictions about the Indian level and what kind of competition does England bring in? I mean, they're obviously a very good side. Can you talk us briefly on uh, their competitiveness too? So, um, to come to England first, uh, they have seen a very sharp increase in the quality of their cricket over the last couple of years. Uh, partly due to two reasons. One is that they instituted this Women's Cricket Super League, which is the second uh, T20 competition uh, for women uh, in the world, where a few of the Indian players have also played um, Smriti and uh, Deepti were part of uh, the one of the winning teams a couple of years ago. So that has helped improve their quality of domestic cricketers. Uh, and second, now they have condensed uh, most of their players into a system which gives them more quality games. Like for example, it's very, it's a sim very similar system to India where they have some uh, three levels of counties. So there's a huge number of counties with, I think, uh, 15 plus teams in each level. So about 45 teams. So the talent is all dispersed in the county level. So what they've done is they've created eight regional centers, which is almost like how we have our interzonal system. And they've picked uh, teams into these eight regional centers. So the best of all the counties come into these regional teams. And now these eight teams are playing against each other, which means that those players playing in that tournament have a much higher quality tournament as compared to county cricket. This has given them a lot of talents, like we're going to see probably in this series, a player called Freya Davies. Uh, we're going to see, um, we're going to see Lauren Winfield, Winfield come back to the top of the order. Danny Wyatt, one of their top openers has been dropped for the ODI format. Um, their uh, left arm spin uh, banks of Sophie Eccleston is very good. Uh, England are also a team that is very good with change of pace from their fast bowlers. So that is, those are the kind of skills that we're going to see. And it's, it's, uh, I always like, love comparing England and India because the systems are so similar. Um, and there's probably, we're going to see a very, very strong Indian lineup, uh, sorry, England lineup. So it's going to be a challenge, especially for the Indian uh, players at, uh, in their home conditions. And as far as the 11 goes, um, I'm actually keen to see uh, Sne Rana bat in the limited overs format because I've seen in uh, domestic cricket that she can score very quickly. And she has a number of shots which we didn't see her use in the test format. So I'm actually very keen to see how she goes in the limited overs format. And maybe what India really needs is also to trust their all-rounders and wicketkeeper with a little more batting responsibility, which will make our batting order longer. So that's what I would like to see. Yeah, Shubhangi, yeah, I, I, yeah, you, you first. I'll come to you. Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, I, I would agree to this one change from the from from the test team with uh, Ekta Bisht coming in. Actually, when Sneha Rana was uh, selected for the test, I was I was a little surprised because I, I did think that we needed somebody to bowl that, uh, you know, away going ball. But uh, seeing her play, she was very impressive. Besides her batting and her bowling, what I liked best about her was she was she kept on talking to Tanya when she was uh, batting, you know, and uh, either giving her that confidence and taking on that responsibility. I think having somebody like that in the lower order is definitely, or the middle and lower order is definitely going to help us. I wanted to ask you specifically, how much of uh, Shefali Verma have you seen, Shubhagi? I mean, she seems to have set 
the whole everybody is anticipating what she's going to do uh, she set the test alight with her approach and things like that. so now it's a 17 year old kid and you know i i'll just take a minute you know back in the days i used to so i did one year in podar college in bombay just by 11 i used to keep in the ladies nets our coach uh, mr vital patel used to also look after the ladies nets i think you know dadar union or something so i used to keep and the thing i saw was i mean i have seen shanta play shanta had the power but i didn't find that power in those days for women cricketer the difference was great technique was superb but that has changed and shefali seems to be in mean, completely new age kind of a thing so how much of her have you seen and what are you looking forward to shivangi so when shefali came in we saw her hitting and she was she's everybody has seen she's an outstanding player but from what i saw of her in the last world cup in the t20 world cup and what she is doing now i thought even in the south africa series i saw her watching the ball a bit more and playing so she was uh, she her shot selection was a bit better but this time when she played in the test match i was really surprised to see how well she adapted herself to test cricket so i think she's she is huge for women's cricket and she's going to her her batting of course everybody talks about and she's an a fantastic player chanta your take on this yes if you can see um, the last t20 world cup where we emerged as runners up was thanks mainly due to shefali's innings the aussies sized her up they saw she is very good on her front foot so in the finals they didn't give her the freedom they didn't pitch up to her and you know that's only a game she didn't score and we lost the world cup but i just saw there's a lot of change she was not that proficient in her back foot but in the test match i saw she has now developed back foot punches and pulls so obviously she's still a work in process but superb you know big exhilarating batting and i think uh, she can uh, take women's cricket to a different level because she has the, the capacity to um, hit big yeah. still any other players that excite you like this uh, are we i'm not talking just this team that's in england anybody outside this also that can you know this this is what see we need superstars or these kind of stars you know then broad base you get a lot more people following the game and wanting to play so you, do you see any more players like this around ah uh, there are so many i mean um, you uh, one of the players i was talking about who england have actually dropped danny wyatt is that kind of a player and i'm sure we'll see her in the t20 format who can really hit those big shots uh, she has a t20 100 to her name and a very good player uh suited to that format you have uh, players in australia like the alisa hillies and uh, from new zealand sophie divine uh, some of the south africans are huge hitters of the ball uh, your chloe tryon and even some of the top order like uh, what's her name sune uh, not sune uh, the, the the opener who made a ton of runs and i just can't remember her name uh, lizel okay. lee thank you very much okay. so there are so many players like this in other countries and i am of the firm belief that there are so many players like this in india also this time uh, a lot of the indian domestic season was broadcast on hotstar uh, the 50 over tournament that happened before uh, the country's second wave hit and we got to see so much talent which we haven't yet seen on the national stage there's a couple of pace bowlers from jharkhand and vidarbh who have beautiful actions and get the ball to really uh, carry through nicely and i'm looking forward to them progressing there are a number of cricketers who are hitting sixes i think there were uh, 21 centuries hit in the domestic cricket uh, in the domestic season this time so those are uh, really good signs good numbers uh, i have always believed that shafali verma uh, is not unique and there are more shafali vermas in india waiting to be discovered um, if we can really pool our talent in the best possible way um, one of those um, one of those ways i think uh, which worked very well when i was playing and maybe uh, shanta ma'am and shubhuti will also agree is the interzonal tournament which really helped get the best of india against each other which is the same which england are doing right now which we haven't had for the last 2 3 years so i i think that is one of the 
one of the uh, best ways to really get that talent coming up to the top uh, and the talent is there i'm, I'm sure there is more shafali varmas waiting to rise yeah uh, that you know th- this is uh, shubhangi this indian team actually flew on a chartered flight to england so it's very different from the days when you and shanta uh, you know pioneering women's cricket and i know that the amount of work uh, i am aware that went in to tie up with bcci can you take us to that phase and mr sharad power played a big role but you are one of the major factors as uh, shanta has always mentioned so how was it that you know how did you convince the bcci and this change and how how was it really how much has it helped actually this happened at a time when the international women's cricket council merged with the international cricket councils and uh, all all the boards were had were, were asked to merge men's cricket and women's cricket all the other boards had merged but uh, bcci had not and initially there was a lot of resistance and it wasn't happening so in fact there was one year when the women's cricket association of india uh the indian team represented uh, played the world, the icc tournaments but it was the wci fielding the team and the bcci actually wrote to the icc at that time and uh, and allowed that to happen so all the other boards had merged but uh, in we we merged with bcci in 2006 uh, you rightly said that initially it it was a big struggle for us uh, you know whether it was accommodation whether it was traveling getting funds was was an issue for women's cricket but later on it became much better and things are much better now uh, in terms of facilities in terms of whether it's there it's traveling whether it's accommodation but i think the best part also is that the girls uh, have a support staff which helps them enhance their game so you have a video analyst with you you have uh, let's say a fielding coach a batting coach and that helps you enhance not just enhance your game but it also helps you to analyze the opposition's game which which is which is good for the girls right now so there's been a huge change from what it was from earlier to now and i'm so glad that the girls are getting better facilities now and making use of it yeah shanta on the same uh, trend i mean there are we history you know should never be forgotten so i i want to you know dig into how do you guys went through how did you you know sustain uh, this game for this long for this merger to happen i mean you know, collapse any time it's not easy but you just kept going. any particular things that you know made it all worthwhile what were your biggest hurdles can you just share some of those things i think uh, looking back i would rather look at the positive side that we okay. got to play you see we traveled unreserved second class there was no third class those days third class in the 60s only disappeared uh, uh, you know the, we traveled unreserved second class we stay we in hostel rooms dormitories l- lying down on the floors and maybe used to carry our own bedding but i feel those are irrelevant things now look at this today's uh, team uh, goes to england by a chartered flight yeah now if you go back further lala manna and all those days we were much they all went by ship here yeah? one month two months they were traveling you, you see because of the struggles they, they they put up with today's generation is benefiting i would say it was our contribution to the game you know to the longevity of the game that, that i feel these uh, small things really didn't matter because the passion you know was the overriding uh, factor there and uh, today i have always said this but even at the cost of repetition i'd like to say the biggest contribution we the pioneers made was in laying a solid foundation had we lost badly in the initial phase of the international game we could have it it would have ended in a premature death of the game but we we sustained we either drew honorably or even eked out a win things like that so the performances were good that led a solid foundation and i would like to thank all those who played with me the pioneers who, who really contributed to the longevity of this game so facilities yes those days were wanting wanting big but 
opportunities. At this stage, I'd like to take the name of Mr. Mahendra Kumar Sharma from Lucknow, who started women's cricket. Yeah. He was a visionary. You see, uh, to, today, we, we tend to forget people who contributed, you know, but then that's the reason I thought I'll raise this uh, person's name because if he had not started the game and organized international events, this we would, we would have seen like many women's sports that started in the early and mid 70s are nowhere in the reckoning now. But we survived because we got opportunities to play and we did we grabbed those opportunities and i feel we performed reasonably well that actually laid a very solid foundation today the mitalis and the shafali vermas can be um, grateful to mk sharma and the pioneers because the foundation was laid on which the edifice has been built today well shanta the ica is here so we are not going to let people forget how it started. We've got a wealth of experience uh, within us. We're going to use that to make sure, you know, that people remember. And as I said, history is very, very important that you remember history and you know your history too. So that, I, I that see is... it basically uh, uh, was the concept, the Loda, Loda Committee reforms, you know, it was a byproduct of that. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, there's a lot of disgruntlement uh, because the people feel ICA or BCCI isn't doing much. You must remember since 2000, since past one and a half years, ever since the new uh, ICA was formed and the new BCCI regime took over, the pandemic has hit globally. And one of the uh, countries badly hit is India. And, and you know, uh, as I said, even nature has been cruel to us to women's sports in general and women's cricket in particular because the number of matches they, they could play has not been visible. And uh, we have had even uh, uh, BCCI meetings are all virtual meetings, you know. So uh, it's difficult to get across some points of view, but I'm sure ICA will uh, uh, we'll see the light of the day and many doubting Thomases will acknowledge that ICA has done and will do good for the betterment of the cricket fraternity. Great. Uh, so finally, you heard these two stalwarts, I mean, talk about how they kept the game going and all. But how is it today? Uh, in the sense, can uh, young girls say, make a, I know there are contracts in place now for the top level. Can they make a career out of cricket? Uh, are we seeing a, a time when parents are telling people, okay, the girls to go and go, go and go ahead and play? So is that change come as far as cricket and women's cricket in India is concerned? Um, firstly, I must really uh, totally uh, acknowledge and uh, just appreciate what uh, Shanta Ma'am said that, and it's good to see this sentiment also being uh, recently very publicly recognized by the current Indian team also that those who came before them have allowed them to enjoy the levels of uh, success that they are uh, and visibility and fame that they are uh, enjoying today. So uh, that's absolutely true. And um, the fact that today you have contracts uh, starting from 10 lakhs in grade C for uh, many of the players is, is a wonderful thing to see at uh, the international level. So I think at the international level, the Indian team is fairly well taken care of. Um, those, uh, I'm sure there are uh, intentions and plans for uh, those contracts to increase um, and probably plans for uh, domestic uh, level to increase as well because right now the fees um, at the domestic level mm -hmm. and I'm sure uh, it's, it's, a, it's a slightly strange conversation to have in the presence of Shanta Ma'am and Shubhudi because they'll uh, constantly be reminding that you know they played for absolutely nothing. And true, that's true. completely true. But the fact is the world is now moving into a place where other countries are paying their domestic cricketers. And therefore, if uh, India wants to keep up and compete, that gap, if we want to narrow that gap, uh, we are also going to have to expect that our domestic cricketers uh, earn better. Um, so for domestic cricketers, it's still not an option to uh, make cricket your career. So. Okay. 
that's something that i would like to uh, see i mean uh, we've heard from the bcci about the intention to introduce domestic contracts i would say that we need to start with domestic contracts for the women because the job opportunities in women's cricket as compared to in men's cricket are very limited in men's cricket you have so many psus offering uh, jobs you have banks you have it department you have petroleum boards um and besides the railways in women's cricket there's only the railways which offers any kind of job security to women's cricketers so i say that women's domestic contracts are the need of the hour and like we've seen with other countries like england australia and now even new zealand have introduced them uh, those are the future for how you can make cricket an attractive option uh, not just if you play for the indian team it, it can work for you but even if you don't play for the indian team and you can earn a domestic contract and you can earn uh, enough money to not uh, need to think about a job while you're playing that is i think the future and the direction that uh, uh, we should grow in and I, i'm sure that the ic will definitely have uh, thoughts on that and uh, directions on that so so your bcci hat on this no i i i don't want to wear a dual hat here <laughs> because uh, you, you, you see uh, <clears throat> uh, but from the context of this contract thing it was at the behest and insistence of mr anurag thakur the then bcci president mm-hmm. <clears throat> that the con- because i was a chairman of the selection committee then so i knew the discussions going on it was he who initiated it today um, as snehal rightly said at to some extent the international women cricketers of india are fairly well taken off by the bcci but yes domestic cricketers are left in the lurch but then you see um, um past one and a half years have really um, gone down the drain because nothing constructive could be done even by bcci you know so uh, because of the pandemic there are certain uh, compelling reasons which you know no one can help but hopefully in future under uh, the leadership of saura ganguly jayshree and others even domestic women cricketers will be taken care of it's my fervent hope and fond wish satish uh, you i i just like to add here yes, yes definitely the domestic cricketers should should uh, get the contracts as well but there are a lot of cricketers now looking at this as a career option because uh, you can make a career out of whether it is uh, you know becoming an, a video analyst whether it's becoming a coach or commentators journalists you know there are lot there is a lot of scope now for cricketers to get into these other fields also you know and serve the game which wasn't the case when we were playing so i definitely think it's 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 great for women's cricket right now it's great to be in women's cricket right now and look at this as a career that's yeah, actually that's really just to, thought just to yeah, come in there uh, yeah. it's a it's a very probably pertinent point um, and maybe something that uh, i'll uh, lob back into the ics court considering um, uh, i say very um, uh, the core almost responsibility is taking care of players who are retired from the game um maybe for women's cricketers recognizing that job opportunities aren't as many um some kind of programs which educate women's cricketers about these existing job opportunities in coaching video analysis training all support roles around cricket uh after they quit playing the game might be something that uh, the ica can work on a very win win basis ica has already uh, taken cognizance of this and uh, i think whatever you said is all is on the cards and i think very shortly ica is likely to come up with uh, uh, you know steps to help former players achieve uh, excellence in different uh, like um, coaching uh, video and as you rightly said but this is all, has already been discussed and uh, very likely be implemented in the near future Lovely. actually uh, we had given a vision plan to mr anurag thakur and uh, it's not just the former players that we need to look at if you we need to start something at the grassroots level and snehal has done a lot of research on that so she would be able to talk about that but at the grassroots level the domestic level the international level and for former players so we had given a vision plan to mr anurag thakur 
at that point of time to cover all these the 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 four uh, areas also i think it's time we had the ipl i think we've got enough players now there has always been this talk whether we have enough players i do think we have enough players now to start the ipl oh that's <laughs> i'm sure we, what we should do is have a separate discussion for two things from i get two takeaways from here one is uh, stale has put out a very interesting paper as uh, shubhangi you mentioned stale we must have a show on that and no hopefully get uh, akarunya or somebody also your fellow authors of the report on the show and uh, sort of discuss it and uh, this women's ipl needs needs an entirely <laughs> we must we must do something uh, possibly the right forum to discuss it too but today i i want to end by asking each of you we have a six match thing coming up three odis three t20s uh put please put put who would you bet on what's the result uh, shanta you first <coughs> my heart says india but uh, my mind says in my head says you know both teams have equal chances um, um in the test matches i would have uh back india to the hilt because uh, that's a used to be our uh, strong point but they have, these girls have not have not played red ball cricket even at the domestic level so i think they have done well uh i'm hoping that women's cricket will win in at the end of the series let the game be triumphant let let people come to watch let people watch and realize that women's cricket can give you good entertainment great shubhangi on those, those noble lines yes we want women's cricket to win but in this particular series yeah. who would you go for um i would be a little bullish about india after seeing you know what the young youngsters have done in the test match but uh, yes both teams do seem to be equal but uh, i do think if we perform to potential we we should uh, be able to do it Yeah, keeping with the accent on you, uh, Stehel, you are the last to go. What's what's your? I'm going to uh, predict two one England in both series. Um, mm -hmm. Purely on the fact that uh, both teams being equal, yes, but England has just played a lot more cricket. They're coming off their domestic tournament. Uh, they've been busy even during a pandemic year as compared to India, um, and they definitely uh, don't have any of the rustiness that India might have uh, going into this series. So. Uh, 2-1 England on both ODI and T20 fronts. It looks like the third third umpire has given the verdict. <laughs> <laughs> she has, she has. Uh, ladies, with that, uh, it's time to wrap. Absolute pleasure, uh, and you know we could actually go on and on uh, for long, but uh, we will we will keep coming back to these shows. Please do rejoin us whenever we want such shows. We will have more people also uh, joining us. Have different panels, but it, it's been an absolute absolute pleasure. I would also like to thank the audience to who have joined us. Hope they enjoyed the show. Thanks, Shanta. Thanks, Shubhangi. Thanks, Nehal. Thanks, thanks for your time and your views. Thanks, thanks, Satish. And Nehal and Shubhu, great to be with you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.